Bastards, today I want to try out something that uh, that I saw on a, from a prepper called City Prepping. Uh, I would advise to go to his channel. He has a lot of good stuff, good tips, good advice, good information, well explained and showed. So, yeah, yeah not to sound like I'm going on the bandwagon, but before I take something in, uh, I would always like to test it out myself to see if it works. I'm kind of skeptical on a lot of things that to just take for granted. So, in honor of city prepping, I will try to to test uh, his uh, his uh, how do you say this this uh, candle that's supposed to be last to to last three hundred hours when it's when it's burning. So, let's go. Let's try it out. I would say. So, what do you need to make this kind of candle? Well, you first need a glass jar. Uh, this is kind of important. It's a jar where it goes a little bit on the inside. Uh, why is that? So that the heat is more concentrated and it will burn. Uh, it will uh, melt and uh, burn up the the oil more uh, efficiently. So how does this uh, candle work? Well, how do you make the, one of these candles? Uh, let's first say how this thing works. Um, if you probably can see. If you can see, this is all uh, uh, oil that is uh, plant-based oil that is, has gone hard and in the middle there is this candle. So the moment that the candle uh, touches, uh, it heats up the, the place around the oil, that will start to melt and just like we all know from uh, physics that uh, when, a, when a wick is burning, it will take the oil, wax or other uh, uh, fuel material upwards and it will drag it down so that the uh, wick will not burn fully and it will be some sort of uh, chain reaction that will uh, keep uh, pulling up fuel as long as it has and that is an efficient uh, burning for the wick so um, how do you make this one first take a glass jar uh, for, you have to be very carefully about the jar it it does not have uh, it may not have uh, contained cracks because if there is even a small crack like when you open the lid of the jar felt a little bit here and there is a little crack uh, by the heat it will uh, uh, create it will start to crack even more and then it will start to burst and you do not want that especially not when uh, there is something with fire going on so um, you take a glass jar, like I said, uh, like like uh, the place where the lid comes, that there is a little bit taps. Uh, you put the cooking oil inside of the the jar. Uh, what kind of a uh, cooking oil are we talking about? Well, it can be it's it's most efficient efficiently. It should be a uh, plant based, and especially the kind of oils that uh, like you can see that will get very stiff. When uh when it's at room temperature, or uh, under under eighteen uh degrees in this case, because this is just made in from a uh, if you can read it, from a jar of coconut oil. Uh, yeah, coconut oil is the as that uh a thing that when when everything under eighteen degrees Celsius uh is going to be solid. So you put it in and you start to melt it. Um, I would just well I what I prefer to do is. To not break the glass is take a, if you have a heat source, try to put it on a low fire, put a take a pot, fill it with a, with a boiling with a, with water, and then put the jar. Don't forget, uh, they, uh, open the jar because if you close it, put it then in the hot water. This will start to build up pressure and it can damage the glass and the jar, and you do not want that. So leave it open, put it in a pot. And just wait till the water in the pot has uh, conducted the heat in, in a safe way because if you put uh, glass directly on a heat source it might crack or burst you don't want that in the pot with warm water till it's all melted um, the moment everything is melted you put the the pot with the melted oil into the fridge uh, it's between depending on how cold your fridge is i would say 20 to 30 minutes Put it in the fridge till you have to actually watch uh, on a regular basis just to see that you have that point 
there is a certain point where the oil is between uh, liquid and a solid. It's between those stages when you can still put your finger in it uh, without a problem that you take a candle. Uh, like you can see in this case, it's one of those uh, small long candles that I I cut in the on the same height of the as the jar, and uh, you place it right in the middle. So because it's still not a liquid and not a solid, it will start to emerge around the the candle that you make, so that it's stuck in it solid. Then you let it cool off. After it cool, it's cooled off. Then you, yeah, then you put it back into the fridge or just wait at room temperature till it till it's a full, a full fully uh, solid thing like you can see now. Yeah, you should. Yeah, I made it uh, by a uh, a little bit longer because yeah, I thought I wanted to to have some uh, measurement to see how long does it take till this candle, the regular candle, is uh, lit is uh, melted. And uh, how long will it take like, from that moment till uh, the rest of the cooking oil is starting to melt and uh, be burned up? So I, that way that I have a reference to, for my conclusion. So um, if you put it just around uh, the edge of the cooking oil, I would advise to carve a little bit around it. So you have that little pit where the where the first uh, burn uh, where the first melting can go in because if you would uh, put it just on top uh, on an eagle uh, surface um, it will start to burn and immediately it will suffocate the flame so you wouldn't have a bright flame all right so i will uh a few i will go i will look at it step from step from now on i will let the candle burn uh i don't know what time it is uh, i forgot my clock but whatever uh, I will I will say it in the next clip that you will probably see. Let's first start to burn this uh, thing. Now I shall uh, let the candle sit on this place, and uh, yeah, I'll come back later and see what it uh, will become. Uh, I will first start to tick off the the clock to see the hours, and uh, yeah. We'll see about that. So, the yeah, the candle is uh, burning now at the at the surface of the oil, and yeah, it's it's a bright light. To be honest, I didn't, I wouldn't have expected this. It also gives uh, yeah, because the heat gets a little bit concentrated. Yeah, could be used as a as a makeshift uh, warmer for a small room in a home. Gives a, a lot of light, more than a tea candle uh, by the looks of it. So, so far, so good. Uh, the only thing I'm a little bit scared of is uh, when it goes down, when the when the when the oil is going down and uh, more of of it get uh, yet again liquid liquid that it uh, will make the how do you say the wick from the candle go a little bit sideways. So that's something I'm afraid of, but yet again, we'll see what uh, it will give. Otherwise, in the future, I will have to put something beneath it to keep it more straight. But yeah, this is just a test and yeah, we'll see what uh, comes from it. I'm already impressed by the light, by the light of it. So, so the experiment has failed, like you can see. Uh, the mistake I made are actually two things. Uh, one, uh, the candle, the candlestick that I put in the middle has, uh, has fallen over. So perhaps uh, next time I should uh, I should uh, put some anchoring in it so it doesn't fall over when when the oil, when the plant oil uh, around it starts to get uh, liquidified liquefied. So that my first mistake. And I think the second mistake is that. Uh, how do you say this? Uh, that I, it's not the right oil for it because this is coconut oil and coconut oil already starts liquefying from 18 degrees. And uh, the moment this starts to, the surface starts to heat up, uh, slowly the beneath side also will uh, start to boil. So if you, if you can see the candle is uh, still liquefied uh, and, and driving and uh, floating around, on its side so but 
to be honest, it's now still liquefied. So that means it's only out, perhaps not uh, only uh, three quarters of an hour, perhaps half an hour. So I'm actually impressed with this candle so far, even though it has failed because uh, it's been since yesterday at night. No, it's... So this candle must have been burning for 22 hours and it's not and it it hasn't not yet uh, reached the 50% of uh, what of the oil that was inside of it so i'm i'm kind of happy with it unfortunately it has failed but that's how we learn things and uh, we learn a second thing from this uh, uh from this little experiment that i want to share and that is uh, it's uh, on the video that i saw it to how to make these kind of candles uh, it's easy to think I can make that all right and like you can see I failed at it it's not really failing it's just uh, I overestimated it perhaps so it's a failure on me but that's what what prepping is all about we prepare so we can make mistakes if we make mistakes when it really matters like when shit hit a fan and you make then a mistake then it could be life or death but like with this, this is just a small example of things that you can try, try out and prepare before uh, while the while the getting is good and the times are good. Then you can you can be permitted to make mistakes and learn from it. So you won't make that mistake when shit really hit the fan and when uh, you really need it. So yeah, I'm um, I'm kind of happy with what I learned here here uh, with this uh, making this candle. All right. So we just like I said before, uh, the most important thing uh, one could learn from this video is try to be skeptical all about things that you see. It's not always as as easy as it as it would uh, seem like. Uh, try to understand, try to not replicate just what you see, but also try to understand what you see. And that is not only in in structural videos like uh, this uh like uh, with a survival candle but it's also just in life general if, whether it's news information or anything else try to be skeptical try to understand the different aspects of it uh yeah so uh that's the most important thing we learned today uh so thank you for watching subscribe i, I would really appreciate it and uh yeah i hope you learned something from my mistake i made around here but yeah, I prefer to to not how do you say this to not glorify only the the positive sides and what and the uh, and the cool and the cool bits perhaps it's perhaps not good worded but what I'm trying to say is uh, I'm going to also sh uh, show the, show you my mistakes and my uh, errors like I did in the video with. Uh, with uh, light sources uh, in home preparedness, uh, my little blooper I did over there. So, yeah, I hope you learned something from uh, from this. Uh, thank you for watching, and I see you in the next video.